Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and I am so happy to be with you on this eve of the weekend. It is Friday. I hope you have something fun planned for the weekend, To you know, regardless of the craziness of our world right now. I'm trying to think if we have anything fun planned for this weekend besides hopefully a couple of naps. That's my hope. Naps are always my hope. <laughs> naps and reading. I'm a simple, I'm a simple woman. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything. Maybe a bike ride. Hopefully there will be a bike ride in there or something. At any rate, I hope that your weekend is shaping up to look a little better than mine. Uh, I clearly have not planned ahead on this one. So as I mentioned at the end of the last episode, I do have another author interview today. I am speaking with James Cooley, and we are talking about his new memoir. It's called Country Boy, City Boy, A Journey That Ain't Over Yet. James Cooley's mother had 10 children by six different fathers. She knew she could not care for all of her sons and daughters living as they did in the projects of Chattanooga, Tennessee. So she sent James and his older brother to live with their aunt and uncle in the tiny farming town of Graham, Alabama. Through humor, wit, and engaging storytelling, James Cooley paints a picture about his arrival in that rural town in the deep south and his immediate realization that his life would never be the same again. In vivid detail, Cooley lays out his struggle to adjust from city life to country life and then back again to city life. Along the way, the lessons he learned molded him into a successful member of his community and a proud servant to his country. Now he shares those hard-earned lessons to educate, encourage, and enlighten our next generation of leaders and the heroes who are helping them on their journey. So that is the description of Country Boy, City Boy, A Journey That Ain't Over Yet by James Cooley. You can see that it is uh, part memoir, part, I guess, self-help, but it doesn't feel like a self-help book. It's, um, there's got to be a better, a better term for this, and I'm sure that there is, and please let me know what my brain is not producing at the moment, but it's, it's really a book of encouragement. It's, uh, James taking his own experiences and sharing those experiences so that people can see what the possibilities are, because his, his childhood was not ideal. It was difficult, but he was able through the encouragement of, um, a few key people in his life and his own determination to become a member of the an active member of the United States Navy where he had a, a fairly long career and then he is now the uh, president and CEO of the JC Cooley Foundation um options and opportunities uh, it's called the choice program he uh, he is um written and produced several plays was the director producer and host of Cooley's Fitness Tips a television show that provided fitness tips and insight for United States Navy active duty and retired veterans to maintain military fitness readiness. So he has definitely had uh, an interesting life, uh, one full of lots of experiences. And he is one of the most positive people I've ever talked to. I, I talk to a lot of amazing authors and amazing people. Uh, James just has a, a really calm centered positive attitude and it was um it was it was a joy to speak with him during this interview so um let's go ahead and turn now to that interview again the book is called country boy city boy a journey that ain't over yet and the author is james cooley hi james welcome to the podcast Hey, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm so happy uh, to uh, be invited to this, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And um, how are you doing today? 
Uh, I'm doing great. I'm looking forward to talking with you as well. Um, we're going to talk about your memoir, Country Boy, City Boy, A Journey That Ain't Over Yet. Before we get to the book, though, if you could share a little bit about yourself, that would be great. Okay. No no problem. Well, you know, I was uh, born in Chattanooga, Tennessee, as uh, I mentioned in the book. I, I uh, went in the military. I spent 23 years in the military. Uh, the United States Navy. I retired as a United States Navy officer. Um, and um, a couple of things I did, I, I, I was an aerospace engineer, uh, system security engineer with Lockheed Martin. I'm retired from that as well. And uh, currently, uh, I'm, uh, I run my own nonprofit organization called the J.C. Cooley Foundation for Options, Opportunities, slash the Choice Program that basically uh, what we try to do is instill a uh, leadership, uh, confidence, uh, and everything it takes for our youth and young adults to uh, grow up and get an opportunity to be our future leaders of tomorrow. Um, another thing, I, I, uh, I'm the host of a national uh, radio show and podcast. It's called It's Your Life, and I host that with uh, my co-host is is Ray Leonard Jr. Uh, yes, he's the son of the, the six-time world champ. And so we've been doing that for about three months now. And I'll tell you, it's just uh, taken off. I mean, especially uh, with the release of my new book, uh, a lot of these opportunities came uh, my way. So uh, that's just a little bit about me. And I'm I'm just, just happy uh, to have this opportunity. All right, and we'll we'll get to know you a little bit more throughout the interview because uh, this is a story of parts of your life. Can you give a, a brief overview of the memoir? Yes, uh, a brief overview. The book is, is about a little boy whose mother had 10 children by six different fathers, uh, and she was never married. And so uh, she knew that she could not take care of all of her kids. Uh, uh, as a single parent, so she decided to send uh, uh, my brother Jerry, uh, number six, and myself with number seven in the chain, uh, to Grand Alabama to uh, live with my aunt and uncle and grandmother. And basically, it, it, it the book goes into detail of how uh, coming from the city, which uh, uh, was Chattanooga, Tennessee, uh, and transitioning to the country, which was Graham, Alabama, the transition that you you go through because um, the book also regarding we'll go into detail. Uh, just it, it talks about the transition and, and how that uh, led uh, to experiences and work ethics, and it kind of shaped me to the person that I am today, going back and forth through that transition. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, my husband's family is from Ethelsville, Alabama, so uh, that, that's a very tiny, tiny little town. I, I, I understand a little bit about the small townness. Um, how how large was Graham? Graham, Alabama, uh, is probably about 400 people or less. And yes. funny is that uh, most of the folks that uh, are in that town or related. I mean, I'm talking about yeah. really related. <laughs> I mean, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Uh, so you know yeah. how small. So it's a, it's a, it's a small town, uh, about 400. I say 450 folks, and um, real tiny town. The biggest store or whatever you shop, and you have to travel about 25 miles or 30 miles. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's that's amazing. That I can only imagine that that would have been quite the transition for you, um, going from a a, lar a large city to uh, not even a town, really. Well, that was a, a major transition because uh, Chattanooga is not a real small city. It's probably about one hundred fifty thousand, maybe a little bit more. And you know, uh, in the city, you know, you got everything: uh, running water, you got all of these different amenities. Uh, I mean, you know, you got everything, but then uh, transitioning to Graham, Alabama, uh, when I got there, there was no running water in the house. There was no electricity in the house. 
There was no uh, bathroom in the house. You had an outhouse. You had to go and uh, catch your own food. <laughs> you know, so and that's just uh, <laughs> you know, it's um, it, it's uh, was a big change in thinking that uh, you leave in this big city where they got all of these things to actually go into a place where you have to uh, get inspired and you have to uh, actually put the work in. And, you know, I tell you, it builds what I believe a great work ethic. Now that you've gotten a bit of an idea of James and this book, Country Boy, City Boy, we're going to go ahead and take our first break of the podcast. When we come back, we'll be talking more about the book and how there are several key incidents and uh, people in James's life that helped to shape his journey and his path and his, his road to where he is now. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. You really can't underestimate the importance of having the right creative work for your brand or your product. Whether it's a logo, a website, a book cover, or an ad campaign, you really need a quality design to make that big difference pop and deliver your overall engagement and success in a competitive market. That's where Design Crowd comes in. Design Crowd has over 750,000 designers from Sydney to San Francisco, ready to help you with awesome creative ideas. They make crowdsourcing work for you. So if you need a logo or you're working on your creative branding, you can go to designcrowd.com and post a brief describing the design you need. And then within about two to seven days, you'll receive up to over a hundred different designs from designers around the world. Then you pick the best design and approve payment to the designer. So you're only paying for the design that you want. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of freelancing and out of crowdsourcing. And you don't have to be a huge company like Harvard Business School to use Design Crowd, although they have used it as well. You can start a project on Design Crowd for as little as $99. And if you go right now to designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or enter the promo code health and wellness on their website then our health and wellness listeners will receive up to $150 off of your design project that's designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or entering that promo code health and wellness TSMC Beauty Tips Podcast gives you advice on everything from hair to fashion to skincare products. We'll talk about the latest trends in makeup, hairstyles, and anti-aging remedies. And we'll cover all of the newest fashion trends. If you have an interest in or questions about the beauty trends that might work best for you, the Golden State Media Concepts Beauty Tips Podcast has got you covered. Download the GSMC Beauty Tips Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I am speaking today with James Cooley about his memoir, Country Boy, City Boy. Let's go ahead and turn now to that back to that interview. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. The So the book uh, takes place over a period of time because it does go through your childhood as well as your time in the Navy. Um, it, it feels to me like it's a series of vignettes that talk about choices or um, milestones. So things in your life that, that really did affect the trajectory of your life. Can you talk a bit about which segments of your life you chose to put in the, in the story and, and how that process worked for you? Sure. Actually, um, the book goes from the time that I was six years old all the way up to the time that I released it. So uh, if you, if you uh, read the book, you'll see that it goes through phases. It's probably about 10 different phases uh, in the book that describes 
of the development of the person. Uh, it described everything that took place uh, in the shaping of this young boy to grow up uh, to uh, be successful. Uh, I mean, at least I like to consider myself that, and to uh, go through the transition of uh, what it took to actually meet each one of the milestones. So, um, it, so it has several different phases to it. Okay. What inspired you initially to write this story down? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, so basically what inspired me was that uh, during uh, the beginning of the phases, uh, I mean poverty, uh, uneducated, um, and just uh, not knowing, and I mean going through the, uh, the situations of uh, uh, the project and games and Etc. And I knew that uh, uh, my father wasn't around uh, to be a father. And basically, what inspired me was that I know that even today, that we have uh, young men and young women, young men and young women going through the same thing that I might have been going through during my transitioning, and they do not know where to turn or do they do not see hope. And um, hope is uh, the main thing that I, I'm, I'm trying to instill in, in uh, these young men, young women, young adults, and everybody that regardless of what situation or circumstances that you might have been born in, I mean, there is always hope if you understand what we call birthrights, uh, birthrights. Uh, confidence, courage, hope, belief, and most important, faith, that you uh, might not start off at the top. I mean, because, uh, you know, uh, you you don't know where God is leading you, but uh, you just have to follow the transition and make the right decisions. I don't like to say choices because I, I believe that uh, it, everything is a decision point. Uh, but you have to make the right decisions I mean, even though you might get it wrong the first three or four times, uh, but if you continue to do it as long as you don't make the wrong choice, <laughs> that, uh, you know, you can uh, grow up, you can learn, and you can be who you, you can be uh, who you who you choose to be. I mean, because it's, that's, it's all about the choice. So basically uh, what inspired me is, like I mentioned, is there are, Kids, young adults, uh, even older adults that might be in a situation where they don't think it's a hope. And I believe that my story tells them that there is hope. And you look at this guy right here. I mean, he went from here uh, over a period of time. It didn't happen overnight, but you just have to believe in yourself. Thank you. That, yes, that, that is that's wonderful. I really appreciate that. Um, you... This is this is a memoir, but you also have a, a book. Let's see, my path, the book of knowledge, your way, your pathway to enlightenment. That is. Um, can you talk a little bit about that book? Okay. Yes. So uh, uh, those are my early writings. Uh, my path. Uh, I was encouraged um, by a older gentleman that uh, I met, and uh, he uh, kind of got a. Uh, a chance to know me a little bit, and basically my first writing was my path. And basically it talks about um, that each one of us has a different path or a different uh, uh, destiny. But in order to uh, really find out who you are, there are several destinations that uh, are going to occur in, in your life and that uh, you just have to just be open-minded and positive. So my path is a writing. It's a, it's a short story that I wrote. Uh, it's about um, a young man graduating from high school, uh, which was myself, and not knowing um, what my future was and not knowing what was the next uh, thing that I was going to do. So it talks about 
a young man, 18 years old, on a bus, uh, not knowing anything, just, uh, uh, boy, it's, t- it's talked about a young man that was walking down the same road in Chattanooga, I mean, uh, same road. I mean, everybody go down that road, I mean, meaning that uh, it's only one road, at least in my world, that that we travel, and most other people travel down that that run road, meaning that you travel down the same road, you do the same thing every day, same, same thing, that you can walk down that road with your eyes closed and you know where every little tree stump or every little gravel or everything. And uh, I was walking down this road, the same road every single day, and you know where the road is at because it's just one path, one road. Wherever the road ends, that's where you're going. And everybody go that, that I mean, I didn't say everybody go that way, but uh, in my writing, they were saying that I knew that uh, this is going to go this way, but I did not want to change because Chattanooga was all I knew, and everybody, I mean, that's, um, that's just life. That just was the life that uh, I saw. So one day I was walking down this road trying to figure out what I was going to do in life, and uh, I came to a kind of like a fork in the road, just like Robert Frost. <laughs> yeah, kind of a fork in the road. And I stopped, and I said, wow, i never seen this. So I, I saw a road going to the right, and I saw a road going to the left, meaning uh, you have a million footsteps going straight. This time, when I was walking down thinking, uh, and I saw uh, road like eight footsteps going to the left, and I saw about ten going to the right, and the million in front of me. I, at that time, I had a what we call a paradigm shift. That is like wow, you know. I know what's straight ahead if I continue. I'm I'm afraid to to go to the left, and I'm afraid to go to the right because there's no footsteps. But I made a decision right then and there that I was going to um, go to the left. <laughs> yeah, so I followed the eight foot step to the left, and I walked that that path for about a mile, and a bus came by, and I jumped on the bus, and I was on the bus for about I mean in my mind for about thirty minutes, and I looked up and said Navy. <laughs> and uh, my path is <laughs> it started out by that said Navy, and I went into the Navy, uh, and, and that's where my path uh, began, and that's what that's about. Mhm. <laughs> I love it. Um, no, that's great. Uh, it, because every every choice you make takes you, you know. Uh, that's how I feel like this book this book talks about is that all those choices make you the person that you are today. Um, and I really like there's a, a, a chapter toward the end. What's that? I'm sorry. I said, well, I was going to explain a little bit more because uh, I also created a nonprofit uh, based on mm-hmm. that, that uh, on my path uh, is uh, that, and the premise of my path is uh, most people think, and still today, that, uh, you know, you, there is no hope, there is no this. But uh, I believe that if you think that you only got one option, um, that, meaning that that straight road, I mean, uh, the path that everybody, one option, that's the only option that you have because that's what we're programmed to uh, think that there are no other options. But when you have a paradigm shift and you see that, wow, that's that, that's it's a road to the left, road to the right. Now they become options, and for every option, there are opportunities. Opportunities, or, or I mean, but most people don't want to take risks, so options lead to opportunities. But in the end, you have to make the right choice. And that's what I was saying. When you, you can make uh, a lot of different uh, wrong decisions until you get it right, as long as you don't make the wrong choice. 
So uh, my path, uh, from my path, it created my nonprofit called the J.C. Cooley Foundation, which is Options Opportunity Slash The Choice Program. Um, probably should have put that in. I mean, I mentioned that to you a little bit more, but that's what that that's where my path uh, led to. See, what did I tell you? Very positive, very caring person. Um, so I, I really, like I said, enjoyed speaking with James. We're going to go ahead and take our second break of the podcast. When we come back, we'll be talking a bit more about the nonprofit that he formed. Again, that is uh, the James Cooley Foundation Options and Opportunities, um, or the Choice Program. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. You really can't underestimate the importance of having the right creative work for your brand or your product. Whether it's a logo, a website, a book cover, or an ad campaign, you really need a quality design to make that big difference pop and deliver your overall engagement and success in a competitive market. That's where Design Crowd comes in. Design Crowd has over 750,000 designers from Sydney to San Francisco, ready to help you with awesome creative ideas. They make crowdsourcing work for you. So if you need a logo or you're working on your creative branding, you can go to designcrowd.com and post a brief describing the design you need. And then within about two to seven days, you'll receive up to over a hundred different designs from designers around the world. Then you pick the best design and approve payment to the designer. So you're only paying for the design that you want. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of freelancing and out of crowdsourcing. And you don't have to be a huge company like Harvard Business School to use Design Crowd, although they have used it as well. You can start a project on Design Crowd for as little as $99. And if you go right now to designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or enter the promo code health and wellness on their website then our health and wellness listeners will receive up to $150 off of your design project that's designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or entering that promo code health and wellness Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out there's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch, whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. SMC Book Review Podcast. Let's go ahead and turn our attention back to the interview with author James Cooley. That that's wonderful. So that inspired you to then um, kind of cre- to create this nonprofit to tell people to tell young people that there are options. Am I am I hearing that correctly? Absolutely. I mean, by, by creating this nonprofit, uh, uh, we got a lot of folks uh, uh, behind us. Uh, and uh, the nonprofit has grown. I'm with Nationwide, actually worldwide right now. And uh, what we do is I'm a motivational speaker. I go out and I speak. I, I teach. I get invited to high school. I get invited to organization. We give away uh, like 30 scholarships a year. I mean, they're not big money scholarships, but they are you can scholarship that you deserve this. So uh, that's where that led to is being able to go out and, help somebody or show somebody else that you can do this and we reward them if they work hard 
at the end, uh, getting them to walk across the stage in front of their peers or et cetera. Uh, so uh, that's where that came from. That's where uh, Country Boy, City Boy, I mean, that it developed. And that's what we at. Well, me and you, what we're talking about today, from that, uh, my path. Yeah, I wanted I wanted to ask you about a specific chapter in in the book um about a teacher who encouraged you to take the 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 test to go to a vocational a vocational high school. Um A, I want to know if you if you have yet remembered her name or discovered her name. <laughs> um uh, that's a very good question because I get that asked all the time even on my show. Um I uh at the time, I was naive. I was 14 years old, and I was just a, a young black black kid uh, in the project, uh, uh, poverty restricted like everybody else. And you really don't take uh, people seriously. Um, um, I was told her name is Miss Miss Wilson, but um, I have not reached out yet uh, to her. But I I do believe, and you know that. That was the decision point in my life um, by her, uh, me not knowing that somebody cared. And I did my work, I did this, I did that, but I tried. I was also, I tried to be funny and class clown and this and that. And you, you don't think anybody paying attention to my other than the other kids around me. Um, she uh, was my English teacher, and um, I, I tell you, uh, when she asked me, was I going to the same, I mean, going to the high school that everybody else pretty much was going to go through, and my brothers and so I mean, everybody went to the high school right up the street. I said, you're absolutely right. I mean, we all do that. And she looked at me. It's the first time somebody ever told me, well, you're not just somebody. You're different. And I was looking at her like this lady has lost her mind. I mean, she has lost her mind. Um, and she she mentioned, she said, hey, I have taught you for my last year or two years, and I know what your potential is. I think that you need to uh, consider going to this vocational school, uh, which was like seven miles from where I live. And, um, and plus, I knew that I wasn't going to pass the test. I didn't think any – since it was out my area and out this, I had to test to get in. And uh, she told me that she believed that uh, she said, I have learned to love you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ain't nobody never told me nothing like that in my life. I mean, I my, we did not say love at all in my house. I mean, it was never mentioned. That was the first time that a person said, I have learned to love you, and I freaked out. And basically, yeah, she uh, encouraged me, you know, Took me to take the test. I took the test. I passed. I got into the school, uh, but I have not dug deep and down uh, and went out. I tried, uh, but uh, just uh, I'm, I'm gonna do it one day. I hope she's still alive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I just I really like that story. Um, and there, there's other points along throughout the book where um, similar things happen. So I really like that you highlight some of that, but then you also took your experiences and created this nonprofit so that you could hopefully make a difference in someone else's life and maybe change the trajectory of their life a little bit. And you know, uh, I think that uh, we have uh, a lot of the kids that have been a part of my program that I gave uh, scholarship to. Uh, Case in point, this year we got uh, uh, six of my kids graduating from college. And we talking big colleges. I mean, (laughs) mean, they grew up in my program. And uh, we talking West Point. We talking Boston College. We talking MIT. Mm, That's wonderful. Uh, Spelman, uh, Clark, I mean, we, I said, well, that's my graduating class this year uh, because we instill in them that they can. You can, and not just that, but uh, a lot more than that. But I, I'm proud of this this, this year graduating class. Uh, uh, but um, over the years, uh, 
I believe that we have inspired a lot, and a lot of great things have happened in my life due to the nonprofit and what we do. I mean, a lot of opportunity. Actually, I mean, the opportunity that I had with you right now probably wouldn't have happened. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm fast. Uh, um, we did things to give back and 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 try to create the future leaders of tomorrow and try to instill in the next generation that hey, anything is possible if you believe. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you did mention that you have a, a podcast and radio show. Um, can you give the title again and, and talk and share a little bit about what you and your co-host speak, speak about on the show? Oh, yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, the title of, of my radio show is called It's Your Life, meaning that it regardless of which generation, which situation, or which circumstances that you – that you're from, regardless of what your job or whatever it is, it's your life. And basically what we try to instill in folks uh, is that it doesn't matter about the job. If you give 110% in everything that you do, um, and if you feel that you are going through problems and struggles like what we're doing today, uh, to my business leaders, this and that, it's your life. You just have to make the right decisions. And if you need help, you need to reach out for help. Uh, so uh, we are uh, we, we we tape out of every Tuesday out of San Diego and out of Dallas. Let's hear. Uh, I mean nationally, and we are podcast around the world by at least seven to eight different podcasts. Uh, it's called Omni Podcast. Don't have all the information in front of me right now. I wasn't expecting this question, uh, but iHeartRadio, Radio dot com, uh, blog radio. I mean, so uh, and our show is picking up steam. We've only been doing this for three months now, and I mean, we started out with one a radio station. Now we are part of many. Um, we're part of 115 radio stations uh, under Salem Media Group. Uh, that is the biggest uh, uh, network um, in the United States, and so uh, we we yeah, so they like what we do. Uh, seem like the public like what we do. Uh, we we are we are every uh, Saturday at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time out of San Diego, and at 6 a.m. 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. of uh, Pacific Standard Time, and 6 a.m. to 7. Uh, AM out of uh, Dallas Fort Worth, uh, and podcast is it's just aired. I mean, so it's aired all around the world every day. And um, you can also anybody that want to listen to the show, you can. We record live uh, every Tuesday, uh, one p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time, and three p.m. Uh, uh, Central Standard Time, and you can watch it on Facebook Live. You can watch the taping of the show uh, either under uh, Ray Leonard Jr. or either under my Facebook. And uh, but uh, we always looking for exciting um, uh, guests to come on and tell what they're doing and their businesses and and uh, how they are encouraging uh, others. Uh, regardless of what uh, situation or circumstances you're from. Uh, so we like to share uh, a lot of different um, things that people are doing worldwide. And we have some fantastic guests uh, that uh, that uh, are coming on the show, have already been on the show. Uh, I mean, and it's not all about the Hollywood lifestyle, uh, this or that, but he, we have a lot of those guys on the show, uh, a lot of uh, business guys, uh, you know, Sugar Ray Leonard, Mike Tyson, Magic Johnson, all all of these guys, uh, and and others, I mean, business leaders, and, you know, just uh, folks that's going to make a difference in the, in the community, you know, doctors, lawyers, uh, our teachers, uh, anybody that's going to make a difference that can encourage, and that's what the show is about, it's, it's your life. And it's all about building up, building up our, our communities, our states, our nation, our world. I 
love that. And you're clearly very passionate about it, which is wonderful. So thank you for sharing a little bit about that. Let's go ahead and take another break. And when we come back, we'll be talking about what James is working on next. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Still on the search of that one true love? On the limbo in this crazy world of dating, marriage, relationships. Well, listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Relationship Podcast. Your one-stop podcast for everything about relationships. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. Over the break, I took the opportunity to drink some yummy tea, so hopefully you maybe did as well, although you are not recording a podcast at the moment, or maybe you are. I have no idea. Listening to a podcast, recording a podcast. I know you're all multitaskers. Um, I have no idea where I was going with that thought, but... <laughs> Let's just go back to the interview, shall we? Because I clearly started a sentence and then couldn't remember where I was going halfway through that sentence. Mm, isolation brain. Good times. Back to the interview with James Cooley. Are you working on another book or short story or anything right now? Right now. I just signed a contract, but believe it or not, um, uh, two days ago uh, uh, with the audio book. Uh, oh, fun. And so uh, we uh, are starting to, at the end of this month, um, we start the process. And uh, it's going to take a couple months, but uh, uh, it should be out by, I say, July 1st is, is the target date, somewhere right around now. So, and then we also have been uh, contracted to do a um, a follow-on book from Country Boy, City Boy Journey. Um, so uh, we got a lot of things that that we have uh, in our bucket and uh, television, all type of stuff that uh, that we we are in the process or trying to you know work out the contracts if that makes any sense. You know how that is. Uh, mm -hmm. But we we have a lot of stuff that's in the bucket. Uh, one thing for sure is the audio book that's already done. I mean, it's not done, but I'm talking about, I'm talking about the contract is done for that. Mm -hmm. That's our next uh, big project, which starts uh, uh, at the end of this month. That's wonderful. Um, in terms of writing, so growing up, uh, I love in the book you mentioned that you were voted most likely to succeed and class clown. Um, so <laughs> two definite sides of your personality. Uh, but did you ever envision yourself growing up and writing, or I mean, how did how did that come about that you that you sat down and started writing your experiences and writing, you know, the short stories, et cetera? I never thought I was smart enough to write anything. Um, and, um, but as I, I matured and I went in the Navy, uh, went in the Navy and I grew, you know, from the bottom and, you know, I, I served in the Navy in, in the, uh, some very high positions and I was then told that you can do this and do that and all this. I mean, a lot of different things that happened. And, um, but then I went, I decided to go to school and get educated and, uh, I discovered that I could do more than what I thought I could do. <laughs> if that make any sense? And um, mm -hmm. then I started writing, and it, a lot of my writings was accepted. And then I decided, well, hey, I want to share this story. Uh, so uh, it started out by, you know, not knowing that I was smart enough. A lot of people don't think that they're smart enough to write books, and this and that, but it's not really that hard. Um, it's just being able to put your thoughts together. So I learned over, you know, I guess 30 to 40 years uh, that you can, that uh, um, 
that you can do anything that you set your mind to. Thank you. So out of your particular experience then, would you have advice for um, someone who is maybe thinking about writing, um, especially writing a memoir or writing um, encouragement like, like you write? Well, uh, my recommendation would be to, if you're thinking that way, if you want to do that, write down your thoughts. Write down a plan. Uh, and it might not be in detail like you want it to, uh, but um, if you're thinking or anything, uh, case in point, um, I used to be in the bed, sleep, 1 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning. I wait, I get this thought, I, I mean, and then I lay down and I forget about it. I mean, I wake up the next morning, I'm in the morning, and I missed out on opportunities because I did not write it down. So basically, if regardless of where you're at, if you're thinking about writing a book when you're doing this or doing that, when your thoughts hit you, you have to write them down. Otherwise, you are going to forget. So uh, in, in writing, what I do is, I mean, even today, I mean, I, I write everything. I think of something, I grab a pen or have a pen, or I write it down. Uh, because then when I look at what I wrote down, all the thoughts come back. So you have to be detailed in doing these things, and you have to plan. Uh, plan, and do not just uh, let your plan sit because you got to take some action. You have to um, uh, think things out, and you have to figure out what are the building blocks that you need to do to get a, a, a writing or a book or whatever out. And you have to focus on what you want the audience to get out of what you're trying to say. Mhm. Thank you for that. Um when you take time to read for yourself, do you have specific areas where you you like to read or or you know, do, um that sorry, let me <laughs> do, do you do you have books that that you that you like to read or that you turn to uh when you read for yourself? When I read for myself, I'm a big Maya Angelou fan. <laughs> Because I like the encouragement uh, that uh, mm-hmm. he provides. I uh, have read of uh, President Obama uh, books. Uh, love uh, Michelle Obama books. But uh, most of the time that I, I I look for aspiring folks, aspiring authors, or it's uh, people that that can relate to everybody. Uh, so, because that's what my thought process is, is uh, you got to be careful what you read and what you put in your mind, because uh, junk goes in, and if you're not reading the right material, you're not doing this, it's not junk in, junk out, it stays in. <laughs> so you have to, I mean, that's not, my, my thing is uh, I, I try to read and I try to uh, uh read people that are encouraging, that's inspiring, that I want to be able to sit back and analyze and think about all the things that other folks are doing that are positive. So that's uh, any book that I read, uh, I uh, try to make sure it's positive, and especially with the audience. Thank you. Um, I know you have a website, so if you can share your website and where people might be able to find you on social media, if you have any active social media accounts. Absolutely. Got them all. Uh, you can find me on CooleyFoundation.org. Uh, that's where the J.C. Cooley Foundation is at. Uh, Facebook, uh, uh, James Cooley, uh, Temeckler, um, uh, and um, James Cooley, the author.com. Um, I also, uh, it's your life radio. Um, and so those are the primary thing. I'm reachable, and and if and you can just go and look me up on uh, the internet, and you you can find a lot more uh, ways uh, to contact me. Uh, but uh, very 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 reachable. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Well, James, we've talked about 
a variety of different topics, but is there anything that we haven't covered that you would like to highlight now, uh, whether that's in terms of the book or the radio show or writing in general, anything that we haven't covered? Well, I mean, one thing that I, I do want uh, the audience to know is follow your dream. I mean, there are going to be many people that's going to tell you that you can't that you can't do this and you can't do this. Do not let that get stuck in your mind because uh, the minute just you start believing that you cannot do it, um, you cannot do it. You know, so, um, and there are many things that I have not accomplished in my life, uh, but I believe that you can always continue to grow and learn every single day. So always have a open mind. And value everyone you talk to because it's your life. And you have to not just go by what everybody tells you and not just take that for face value. Listen to everything. But you are the one that making the decisions when things happen to you. Um, and I believe that growth, continuous growth, continuous education, continuous uh, faith and belief that that will always give you an opportunity for being better tomorrow. I mean, you always want to learn and have your mindset open so that you can continue to be a better person. And one thing that I I want uh, the audience to to understand is do not give up on your dreams. I use uh, a thing that I write in my book called the VUF, which is vision, understanding, and focus. And basically, it's we all have dreams, and our dreams come from our visions that we have. Even though we might not be able to see the end result, We have to be patient, and we have to focus on one building block at a time. Um, Open-mindedness, education, and follow wisdom, people that's going to make you better. Uh, If a person is not going to make you better, I don't believe that you need to be hanging out with them. (laughs) I mean, that's just, I mean, hang out with folks. and follow folks that's going to make you a better person every day. Yes, and that actually reminds me a bit of the – there's a, a chapter toward the end of your book that's called um, you, are, oh, well, pst, you Are a Masterpiece. It's, it's only a page and a half, uh, but it's uh, it's lovely. Um, you know, you remind us that we are beautifully and wonderfully made. We are a masterpiece and that we should not forget that. So uh, I, I really appreciate the positivity with which you write and, and that you included that chapter. Absolutely, because uh, each one of us are a masterpiece. I mean, we're born uh, uh, with, I mentioned to you uh, earlier, about the birthright, which is confidence, courage, hope, belief, and faith. However, God, uh, those are what we call common birthrights, meaning we all are born with those those birthrights right there. But God gives us our own fingerprint where even if you were an identical twin or whatever, uh, you got this thing in you different than everybody else, I mean, regardless, which makes you a masterpiece. So, uh, but in order for you to discover your your purpose in life, you have to dig deep inside because with the birthright, I believe that we all are born uh, to be successful, but we a lot of us never find ourselves. So, Regardless of what anybody tell you, uh, that you ain't this and you ain't that, uh, you are a masterpiece. You were born, and God broke the mold when he uh, made you. Uh, but you have to discover your own potential, and that sometimes take a long time in life. 
to discover that. But once you discover that, uh, you know that uh, this is your purpose and no one else has this purpose and you were made specifically for that reason. Yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And and thank you so much for taking the time out of your weekend to talk to me. I know that you are busy between, you know, everything that you do, including traveling for the radio shows. So thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Well, I really appreciate you giving me an opportunity, and this was absolutely fantastic. And I uh, can't wait to hear the final uh, product so we can uh, put this out and uh, let other folks uh, get a better understanding. Uh, well, we are trying to do everything we can to do our part in making our communities, our cities, our state, our nation, our world better. And we are instilling confidence uh, based on past experiences that you can do anything that you set your mind to. Thank you once again to James for taking the time to talk to me about his book. Once again, it is called Country Boy, City Boy, A Journey That Ain't Over Yet. It is um, a quick read. He writes with such warmth and humor and compassion. It's it's really just kind of a, a break in your day, a bit of mindfulness to just sit down and read. The The chapters are short, so if you don't have a lot of time, you can sit down and read a couple of pages and read, you know, a quick vignette in this story. So definitely something that you should check out if you are interested in this memoir. Thank you again to James. Thank you, as always, to you, my listeners. I so appreciate you. I hope that you will join me again on Tuesday when I will be speaking with author Brandy Ferner about her hilarious book, Adult Conversation. If you are a parent or if you have small children in any capacity, you know, whether you're a caregiver or a parent or an auntie or an uncle, whatever, you will appreciate this book. Uh, it's making me laugh I hate to say laugh out loud because I really dislike that um, particular form of text speak, but it's true. It is making me laugh out loud. And you know, my husband always looks at me weird whenever I am reading a book and I just start cracking up. This is one of those books. So I hope you will join me on Tuesday for that conversation. In the meantime, thank you as always. If you are a fan of this podcast, please do me the favor of following us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I would love to hear from you there. Um, also, give us a nice review if you are so inclined. Um, five stars would be lovely. A written review is helpful so we can get this podcast out to more bookworms like you. Thank you again. I know I say thank you a lot, but I really am grateful for all of you. So I figure it's better to say thank you more than not enough. So I'm going to say it one more time. Thank you again for joining me for this episode of the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I hope you have a wonderful weekend, and I hope that weekend is full of plenty of time to get yourself lost in a good book. Thanks. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.